from News Channel 5, where the news comes first. This is News Channel 5 Today. This morning, tragedy on the road. People are mourning the loss of a local college student killed while riding his bike. Plus, honoring and remembering a local Marine. How you can show your support for the Marine and his family today. Good morning. It's Wednesday, September 9th. I'm Jackie Bender here with Gib Brown. And Gib, what's the weather looking like today? It's, it's not raining. I mean, you go pinch yourself. It's not raining. It's been raining now. It seems like a full week. Uh, we woke up with a little bit of sunshine. We early morning hours today, and it looks like we're going to keep the sunshine in the sky without the rain. Rivers are going to start to recede. Things are looking a lot better over the next couple of days. Take you out the door today, and Wednesday's forecast, as you can see, we're going to see a wake-up temperature of about 7 a.m. at 40 degrees at noon 50. 6 p.m., we hold the sunshine in the sky at 54 degrees. What's in store for the rest of the work week? We'll let you know in the Weather Plus forecast coming up. Jackie? On the Crime Watch this morning, a local college student is dead after a tragic hit and run. And state police say they've found the driver involved. Officials say 20-year-old Yi Hao Shell was riding his bike near Route 3 in Plattsburgh when he was hit and killed by a tractor trailer. We're told Shell, who went by the name Brian, was an exchange student at Plattsburgh State. University officials say he was from Malaysia. State police say a witness who saw what happened called them. They say they found the driver of the tractor trailer late last night at a residence in West Shazy. They're not releasing any additional details at this time. Also on the crime watch, Vermont State Police are investigating an officer-involved shooting in Brattleboro. Here's what police say happened. 19-year-old Brendan Houston of Montpelier was walking down the street with a knife. The officer, Amy Hamilton, told him to drop it. He didn't. Instead, she says he threatened her and raised the knife over his head. She tased him, but it didn't stop him. Police say she then shot him in the hand, and he still didn't stop until another officer tased him again. He's charged with attempted aggravated assault on a police officer. Back in April, Houston is accused of leading police on a high-speed chase from Montpelier to St. Albans in a stolen Mercedes. He was ordered by the judge to go through a mental evaluation. Today, two men accused of firing shots in Thetford earlier this month are due in court. 62-year-old Frederick Berez and 41-year-old Thomas Berez have been charged with aggravated assault with a firearm. Police say they fired shots at a car with 22-year-old Kyle Moses and 23-year-old James Moses Jr. in it after the car came on Frederick Berez's property. Police say there's been past tension between the two families. A Vermont man currently serving time for robbing a bank is now facing charges that he knocked out a 76-year-old woman's teeth in a home invasion. Matthew Fortier pleaded not guilty in court last week to a number of charges including aggravated assault, unlawful restraint and robbery. Officials say he and two other people broke into the elderly woman's Bennington home in 2004. Fortier is already in federal prison after he was found guilty of robbing a bank in New York. If convicted, he faces 80 years in prison. New this morning, a Wyndham County man is facing a charge for waking up numerous people in the middle of the night. State police say they got three calls that 43-year-old Jeffrey Scott Douglas was standing in the middle of Route 30 in Townsend yelling obscenities, waking everyone up. When troopers arrived, they say they found Douglas naked standing on the side of Route 30. They say that then he walked directly in front of one of the cruisers blocking travel. He's due in court in November. And human trafficking is not generally a problem Vermont hears about a lot. But on Tuesday, Vermont officials came together to discuss a new law the Attorney General plans to propose. Vermont is one of the only states without a human trafficking law. Uh, women involved in prostitution who have been trafficked here from Southeast Asia or Central America. And we've seen it in some employment situations where uh, would-be students who think they're coming to the University of Vermont or Middlebury College end up uh, uh, working in Vermont and uh, certainly not studying. The Attorney General plans to propose the law in January when the legislature reconvenes. Now, weather on the five. 
Well, we got a couple of weather makers today. We've got low pressure basically over the midsection of the country. We've got high pressure over the Great Lakes. Basically, what's going to be happening is these two systems are going to be sliding in our direction and they're going to be affecting us. It looks like the high pressure system is going to suppress the low, meaning we're going to see lots of sunshine today. What's in store for the rest of the week? We'll let you know in the Weather Plus forecast. Jackie? Thank you, Gab. Today, officials are asking you to come out and honor U.S. Marine Lance Corporal Anthony Chucky Rosa, who was killed in Afghanistan last week. A motorcade for Corporal Rosa will start around noon at the Atlantic Aviation Center and continue to Rosa's hometown of Swanton. We're told it will travel west on Williston Road and enter the interstate north by the Holiday Inn. The motorcade is expected to arrive in Swanton around 1 and will go by the high school and his family's business. The VFW post in Swanton is asking people to bring a flag and show their support. It's just to show the honor and dignity that this young Marine deserves. To let the family know that the country does believe in our military today. The calling hours for the Lance Corporal are Friday 3 to 7 p.m. at the Kidder Memorial Home. His funeral will be Saturday at Miss Coy Union Valley High School at 11 a.m. A major tenant has pulled out of the Moran plant redevelopment project on the waterfront, but Burlington's mayor says the project still will go on as planned. News Channel 5's Stuart Ledbetter explains. City leaders still want to see construction begin next summer. To turn the hulking old power plant on the waterfront into something brand new. A $25 million sports and entertainment complex that includes three major tenants. Still a go despite the sudden pullout of one. Rollovers are dangerous on the road, but it turns out they're just as dangerous on the farm. A new program called Rebates for Roll Bars targets the danger of tractor rollovers on farms across the region. Farmers in New York and Vermont and soon New Hampshire can use the rebate to pay 70% of a roll bar system. The system adds a covering called a roll bar and a seat belt to old tractors. Officials say in 99% of cases, it will keep a person completely safe if the tractor tips. We know it's challenging out here. There's hills, there's valleys, there's no money on a lot of farms in Vermont. But you really need to consider this program to retrofit your tractors. The program is run through UVM Extension. Farmers can call 877-ROPSR for you to sign up. Vermont's Department of Fish and Wildlife is advising some people in Charlotte to not use the water from a local creek. Officials began treating Lewis Creek Tuesday morning from Scott Pond downstream to where it empties out into Lake Champlain in Ferrisburg. Officials say the water advisory is, is, is expected to last three to six days. And as you get ready to head out the door, here's a look at this morning's newspaper headlines. In the Burlington Free Press, some Vermont grocery stores are taking eggs off the shelves that were produced at a main facility. Plus, a man who had a near-death experience last month walked his daughter down the aisle over the weekend. And in the Times Argus, Democratic candidate for governor Peter Shumlin says he'll deliver a single-payer health care system. And a Vermont state trooper is cleared of charges that he used excessive force to stop a wrong-way driver. Checking for headlines across America, the latest in a parade of politicians who are leaving Washington headed home in search of voters. Tracy Potts has more on this from Washington. For Washington, it's time to face the music. Congress is shut down till after elections. Politicians now coming face to face with voters, boasting about what they got done. Because of that Recovery Act, 3.6 million jobs were saved or created. And apologizing for what they didn't. Both parties share the blame for this. Coming up, we'll tell you about a new bill aimed at helping veterans get back to work. But first, Gibb has your Weather Plus forecast. You're watching News Channel 5 today.